NASA has released the first images of the moon taken on the Artemis mission and they are spectacular. Early on Monday morning, the Orion spacecraft did a flyby of the moon, passing roughly 80 miles above the lunar surface. The images of the moon were captured by Orion thanks to cameras installed on the vehicle's solar wings. There weren't any astronauts on board the crew capsule for this Artemis 1 mission, but these images show us what astronauts will see when they fly to the moon on Artemis 2 in just a few years' time. And the best part? The images were captured by hacked GoPros, but not the kind you can buy off the shelf. When humans first traveled to the moon on Apollo 8 back in 1968, and then landed just seven months later with Apollo 11, the images they sent back were historic. But now, 50 years later, we're no strangers to images from space, whether it's shots taken by astronauts on the International Space Station, or SpaceX live streaming a mannequin riding through space in a Tesla. But the first images from Artemis are still mind-blowing. This is the first time NASA has sent a human-rated spacecraft into deep space in 50 years, and it's going further than any crew-rated vehicle has ever gone before. When it finally lifted off in the early hours of November 16th, the Artemis launch went off without a hitch. We got an amazing view as the space launch system blasted off from Launch Complex 39B at Cape Canaveral, sending Orion into space. But the action didn't stop there. After the SLS core stage was jettisoned and Orion unfurled its solar wings, we got our beautiful first images of Earth. But that was just the start. After journeying through space, Orion did what's known as an outbound powered flyby to latch onto the moon's gravity and sling Orion into a distant retrograde orbit around the moon. Retrograde means orbiting around the moon in the opposite direction to the moon orbiting around Earth. And distant essentially just means it's at a high altitude above the moon. It'll fly about 40,000 miles out past the moon at its furthest point. But during this powered flyby, that's when we got up close and personal with the moon. Orion buzzed roughly 80 miles above the surface of the moon, its closest flyby on this whole journey. But I wanted to know more about the hardware behind these images. And so, with a couple of calls to the good folks at NASA, I managed to track down the person who could tell me. Well, my name is David Melendres, and I'm the imagery integration lead with the Orion program at NASA Johnson Space Center. Melendrez's job is to oversee operations for Orion's cameras. There are 13 cameras installed across Orion, inside, outside, and on the spacecraft's stretch out solar arrays. They're a mix of industrial cameras from a Canadian company called Pixelink, as well as GoPros. NASA opted for the GoPro Hero Black for this mission, but with a lot of adjustments. The Franken cameras, some of them are highly modified GoPros. I would not say you can go out and get them because you can't. They've been taken apart, reprogrammed, there's a new lens. They've been basically completely rebuilt in order to survive a deep space and rocket flight environment. NASA has been sending cameras into space for decades, but on this mission, they had to survive launch inside the rocket. Then once their protective covers were jettisoned, they had to survive out in the open in deep space. You have to take care of the circuit boards and make sure things aren't going to fall off because they do have to go through vibration testing. Um, we've had to attach heaters to keep them warm in deep space and uh, just generally do our best to make sure they're not going to keel over when you're on the far side of the moon. You simply cannot go down to Radio Shack, if that even exists anymore, fries or whatever, you know, and buy a camera and bolt it onto a rocket and just expect it to work. Um, you might get lucky, but chances are the vibration, the thermal, the radiation environment will choke that camera pretty quickly. So when you're going out past the moon, how do you get the images back to Earth? Well, the answer is radio. For this, NASA is using its Deep Space Network, the same network that's been talking to the James Webb Space Telescope. The Deep Space Network is a network of telescopes in Madrid, Goldstone, California, and, drum roll please, Canberra, Australia. I didn't need to necessarily mention where they all are, but I will mention Australia anytime I get a chance. Hi, Mum and Dad. Anyway, even with the DSN, getting the image back to Earth is no mean feat. So to go all the way to the moon, it's not like Station. Station, we're used to getting megatons of video. That's in low Earth orbit, that's right across the street. From the moon, to get a live stream video, 
at what folks would expect as 4K video quality. Well, I can get 4K video on my iPhone, but you're not doing it from the moon. The images are sharing bandwidth with other really important communications and telemetry data that's coming down from Artemis. So there's a lot to squeeze through this downlink. That's why a lot of the live video has been reasonably low res, but there is an upside to all of this. NASA is going to be recording several hundred gigs worth of data and about two thirds of it will stay on board the Orion spacecraft. But when Orion splashes back down off the coast of Hawaii in mid-December and it's brought back to the Kennedy Space Center about two weeks later, we're going to have a huge amount of amazing footage to see. Beautiful high resolution footage of Earth, the moon and everything in between. All captured using Frankenstein cameras in deep dark space. And frankly, that is a pretty cool holiday present. All right, that's all from me. I'm glad you could join me to geek out a bit on these cameras. If you are interested in more about the Artemis mission, then make sure you check out our deep explainer on the launch and its path around the moon, as well as our trip to the Michoud Assembly Facility, where we got to see where the rocket is made. In the meantime, subscribe to CNET for more space news as it happens. I'm Claire Riley for CNET, keeping an eye on Earth in everything happening in space.